Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Mr. Warren Hayes Show. I am the returning Mr. Warren Hayes. That's right. Uh, returning this week, back on YouTube, back on the podcast. Well, I missed, I missed two weeks of this. Two weeks of this. Can you even begin to imagine, right, me being completely out of the picture for a full two weeks? I can't. And yet it happened. It, and it's silly stuff. Well, silly and not so silly. Silly stuff that there. Um, I was um, I was flying into uh, the United States, right? I'm, uh, right now, as you can tell, I'm not in the U. I'm not. A, I'm not at Warren Hayes HQ. I, I am I am co seated comfortably somewhere in Wisconsin right now. But uh, I was supposed to arrive on the Wednesday. Flights got delayed. There was the, these huge storms in Chicago. Whatever. I mean, look, my flight got delayed. I had to overnight in Chicago. Finally made my way over on the Thursday. I just you know I got here and you know, well, you know most of you know that I'm I'm visit I'm out here uh, visiting Kristen uh, and uh, well yeah. yeah. You know, kind of wanted to spend some some time with her, you know, and you know, I was exhausted with the with the dry with the, with the travel and all that. Like it just wouldn't work. I wasn't in a good mindset. Then the week after, I get sick. Last Thursday, Ooh, I legitimately yeah. get sick. I get some kind of stomach flu. I don't know what it was, but it was bleh, bleh, and, and bleh. I'll spare you the details, but it wasn't fun. But here I am tonight. And everything's cool. Like I said, like I'm in Wisconsin. I'm at. I'm in. I'm in uh, Kristen's office right now. Look at how cool her background is, as opposed to mine. You see that? You see this shit? Look at how awesome that is. This is all stuff. Well, most of it is stuff that she's written. Uh, articles that she's written in Pro Wrestling Illustrated in the print uh, in the print edition, right? She's got like a an interview that she conducted with uh, Shotzi Blackheart here. Uh, she's got the cover. Of the first, oh, well, you don't see it, but it's uh, last year's women top 100 list. That was the first time she contributed there. We've got her article on Hannah Kimura with some uh, Lauren Moran art. Lauren Moran art here as well. Look at how cool her show is. Shout out to Lauren, by the way. We got a chance to talk to over on Bell to Bells. We conducted an interview with her. She's so cool. Wonderful person. Great artist. But uh, I, 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 like my background is essentially like a, you know, it's a tunnel. It's like a, it's like a, a hallway. It's not, it's not literally a hallway, but it looks like a hallway. I could, you know, if anyone were to tell me, Warren, do you, do you record in a hallway? I wouldn't be, I, I, I wouldn't be upset about it. I wouldn't be miffed. It does look like, and then I come here and I'm like, I'm setting myself up. I'm, you know, adjusting the camera, getting the mic. And I'm like, holy shit. Look at, look at how cool, look at how cool her setup is. And she's letting me do this out of the kindness of her heart because she knows how important this is to me. And uh, and she also she also wants, she says it often, you know, how much she appreciates all of you coming out every Thursday night. And I do too, coming out here every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, or 8 Central, <laughs> right here on YouTube.com slash Mr. Warren Hayes. Because I record this stuff live every Thursday. And 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 mean it. when we do this stuff live, that means that we get people jumping in here, joining us live in the live chat. I have right here. Look at this. We got Robert, Larry, and Kelly Tonjes who are always on the dot. They're always you know first in, last out. Well, I don't know if they're last out, but they're always first in. Good to see you both uh, this week. Nice to see you. We got the streak saver who's here. To hang on, man. Hang on a second. We, we're gonna talk. Uh, uh, hang on a second. <laughs> Fifth generation. Carney Joseph with it. How you doing, Joseph with it? Nice to see you. We got J.K. Schwal, who's here as well. Um, and uh, J.K. Schwal, member, channel member of the Mr. Warren Hayes Show, uh, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, got to meet him last night in um, in Milwaukee at the, at the Dynamite Show. So that was fun. It was nice to it was nice to meet you, man. That was cool. Dylan Tracy, good to see you as well. Let's go. Metal Michael, nice to see you. Welcome back, sir. Mr. Fantastic is here as well. Rick Poling, nice to see you. Flowman is here as well. Big T, Injection 2K, and good friend of the show, Tim Traver, is here as well. Nice to see you, Tim. Nice to see everyone tonight. And hey, if y'all are right here right now and you're you're enjoying this already, give it up to 
if you like the background that I'm working in front of today, give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> give the video a like. Because uh, it, it's, it's really silly, but it's the kind of thing that really does help out the Mr. Warren Hayes show. Uh, get seen, get heard all over YouTube. So I would appreciate it a great deal. And of course, if you want to leave, uh, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast application, because yeah, I'll be back. I'm back on audio too. How you doing? Well, you can uh, leave us a review, a like, a favorite, a follow, whatever it is. That kind of stuff is amazing. And it helps out a great deal. And I want to I thank you all in advance for your, your support. Simple thing, little thing, but it helps out a great deal. It really does. I talked about Bell to Bells just a second ago. Bell to Bells.com, Women's Wrestling Wire, B-E-L-L-T-O-B-E-L-L-E-S dot com. Got a whole bunch of stuff. We got an interview with Match Masha Slamovich up there right now. That was conducted by our, our pal, Ella J. That was amazing. She uh, also did an interview with, uh, she, we got interviews up there. Masha, I conducted an interview with Jetta, independent, British independent wrestling uh, stalwart. Doing this for 19 years. She was going to be wrestling tomorrow at Pro Wrestling Eve's Wrestle Queendom 4, which is uh, Pro Wrestling Eve's first show out of the pandemic. So I'm excited about it. You, if you've been a long time listener, you know uh, Dan uh, the owner, Booker, of Pro Wrestling East. He's a good friend of the show as well. He shows up once in a while. Great women's wrestling, consistently. I'm excited that they're coming out with their first show uh, this uh, tomorrow on Friday. And you know what's cool about it? It's going to be free on YouTube, on the Pro Wrestling Eve YouTube channel. So I would highly suggest that you go and check that out. And, and tomorrow, and here's how excited I am. Here's how excited I am about this show. I am driving to St. Louis, Missouri tomorrow. It's about a... Eight hour drive from where I am right now. I'm planning, when I say I, I mean Kristen and I, we are planning, literally planning, a stop at some point so that we can uh so that we can stop driving, get out, go into a cafe or someplace with internet, so that we can watch the show and cover it, and then hit the road again. That's how excited we are for this show. And you guys should be excited too. Don't threaten anyone with violence. Only my children. That's a joke. I'm not the violent type. Really? No one's ever... I say that, but no one has ever pushed me to the brink. You know? I I, I probably have like a very... I'm, I'm probably very tolerant in general so it's like no one has really ever pushed me to the point where i have where, where i snap you know where i do something intrinsically violent i've never even punched someone and yet like being mad enough to just you know lift in i have been punched trust me. <laughs> to, to no one's surprise listening right now um but yeah like sometimes i wonder sometimes i wonder like how, what would it take for me to really get violent? And the and the one systematic thing that always like when I think about it, and I'm like, okay, I'm right now, I'm I'm goddamn triggered. Is if someone did something to my kids? Oh, I, I probably you know that blind rage that you you keep hearing about. It's just like becomes tunnel vision and you just go for someone and you don't know. You sort of lose all of what's going on and you lose your reason and sense and just go for it. I'd probably, that, that, that's probably it. But yeah. Hey, bell to Bells, God damn it! Go watch it. YouTube.com slash Bell to Bells. Our interviews are all there. The Jenner interview is super cool. She also talks about her wedding. That's very, that uh, that's awesome. Masha talks about her year. She had a fantastic year. Go check that out. This is all, uh, so much stuff. And you, you'll want to hang on to Bell to Bells this, uh, to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in NWA Empower this weekend because both Chris and I are going to be spending the weekend in St. Louis. That's why we're, we're traveling there. And we are going to be covering, uh, of course, Empower on Bell to Bells. And I'll probably be uh, doing some stuff with the, with the dudes for NWA 73. We're very excited to, to see the show live. Um, especially, especially, um, 
especially considering um well especially empowered that's the that's the one thing we are most excited to watch so that's it it's been a very it's been very busy for me <laughs> it's uh, being, being over here in the states yeah absolutely I want to say hello to Supersonic X. Good to see you, Justin Firestein. Bob Aruski is here, and there you go, Dan from Pro Wrestling Eve is here. I hope you were here for when I was putting uh, when I was plugging the show, Dan. Wrestle Queendom tomorrow. Wrestle Queendom four. Be there. Be absolutely be there. Um. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay. Now, you know, I always talk about it. Yeah, you know, ways that you can support, and I talk about. Comment streaks, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my dubious uh, duty to advise you that the streak has been broken. We were not able to hit 20 comments on the last video, which is a shame. Streak, the streak ends here. Are we going to start one up again? I think we should. I think... I think we should try the streak one more time. Give it another go. Give it another shot. Cross our fingers that it'll work this time. Because I still, I, I, I'm going to cook something. I want to cook something from that book. And I'm not, and I'm not from the, the WWE cookbook. That, that's, to me, that would still be the reward. Got my hat all crooked. That would still be the reward. I still want to cook something from the WWE cookbook. From the Attitude Era, do you smell what the WWE is cooking? And I'm not cooking anything personally out of it until I do it for you guys. I, I that's Scout's honor. I'm not. <laughs> but I have, I, in all good faith, I have to reset the counter. Now you can't, if you're watching live right now, you can't leave a comment. But if you're watching this on demand later, then you can go ahead. And drop a comment. Cross our fingers. Second time's a charm. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do it. I, I'm convinced we'll do it. It'll happen. Um. Other way, you know, you can also support the Mr. Warren Hayes Show uh, by uh, becoming a member of the Mr. Warren Hayes Show channel right here. If you uh, click the join button and you become a member, you can even do it directly. Uh, from the chat if you're watching right now you get access to emojis if you'd like to come here live this is the best thing you get your own exclusive emotes plus on top of that you get access to the post show that i record immediately after the mainstream every thursday night we hang around the members together and we talk we talk we get um uh, we get some uh, some discord calls we get some um we get that's it we get discord calls we get uh all sorts of great stuff chat we, we just sit around and we talk about stuff and tonight we're talking about wwe's pay-per-view weekend i just finished with um summerslam takeover 36 so if you want to come share your opinions talk with me talk with the rest of the crew the rest of the members please come and join us happens immediately after we're done right here and that is exclusive for chat for channel members of the mr warren hicks show and you can also leave us a super chat and i will read your question or comment uh, on the air, like J.K. Schwal dropped a super chat, but I'm going to save that one for uh, a little bit because it is very because it is going to be uh, relevant to uh, to what we're going to be talking about uh, a little later on tonight. Well, thank you very much for your super chat, J.K. Schwal. I'll come back to it. I've already made a note of it. There we go. Um, there we go. Beep boop. Good to see you. As we. Begin. We're gonna jump right in. See, a, a little little peek behind the curtain here. You know, I usually have. You know, we do the weekly wrestling inspection and the music and all that. I I I have access to a lot of my typical assets for streaming, but I don't have like you know the funky guitar and the graphic to 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 for it to work tonight. And I apologize. And I apologize to Ben Phantomark82. So show him some love by heading over to his Facebook page, Phantomark. Uh, facebook.com slash phantomark82 and show some more but let's get right to it we're gonna start talking about wrestling because there's been a lot of stuff there of course there's a lot of stuff to talk about what are you talking about <laughs> um and i've been debating on how to uh, on how to do it uh tonight one because because you know 
there's some pretty big stuff that's been happening in the world of wrestling since last uh, since last Friday. But I think I'm going to keep it within uh, within the companies, right? I, th- I think that's what I think that's what makes most sense. I'm going to keep it within the companies. And I'm going to start by talking about WWE. Get those uh, pay per views out of the way. Two massive pay per views that they had this weekend. Of course, they had the big one, SummerSlam. One of the big, one of the big four, big five. You know, some people, you know, uh, some a lot of people consider Money in the Bank to be one of those. But if you're going, you know, in the traditional big four WWE pay per views, you know, WrestleMania, you got Royal Rumble, you have Survivor Series. SummerSlam, which, by the way, is the biggest party of the summer. On top of that, um, let's uh, le- le- let's talk about it. Um, I was uh, obvious. Well, uh, not necessarily obviously, but I don't know why it'd be. It's obvious to me, but doesn't mean it's obvious to you guys. I was. I did. I watched it uh, the next day because I was at a. I was at Warrior Wrestling the night before uh, in. Um, in uh, in Chicago and and by the way, what happened here? Look at that. Stay up there. Lock it into place. Um. Yeah, I was at Warrior Wrestling. Uh, fantastic independent, uh, wrestling promotion based out of Chicago. Uh, and it, I was I was thrilled to be able to go see. Uh, that I was able to go see a show. Like I we we were all I was already in Chicago the night before because we. Actually, we're at the United Center, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. And we decided to stay overnight and be like, hey, why don't we go hang out then at uh, at Warrior Wrestling? And by God, I'm glad I did. Fantastic show. I And they they have, they have put on shows with big, I don't know how else you'd call it, like AAA indie names. And um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with them, but the, their shows are always quality. I always end up watching the shows. Uh, from from the comfort of my home, so I was really happy to be there. They had a stacked card, a uh, fantastic match between Kylie Ray and Thunder Rosa uh, for the Warrior Wrestling Women's Title. Kylie Ray came in as the defending champion, but she lost to Thunder Rosa, who was the new Warrior Wim- Wrestling Women's Champion, and, and really a fantastic match. The match of the night, if you ask me, and they started straight off the bat with that. It was great stuff it really was a fantastic uh opening match match period two of the best female workers out there for, we're being completely honest with each other um so that was really good you had some warrior regulars here cole radrick defeated isaiah Ves- uh, isaiah Ves- excuse me isaiah velasquez pardon me you also had marco stunt defeating jackson crowley now jackson crowley i Hadn't heard about him previously, but having seen him uh, with Marco Stunt that night was absolutely fantastic. He uh, that was my revelation of the evening. He was the guy where I was like, "Oh my god, okay this this guy is great. He's tall. He comes. He has a bit of a uh, an intimidating gimmick. He walks in slowly, and he has a a disturbing mask on that kind of stuff. And he just tossed Marco around." Marco made him look like a million bucks. Fun little match. At Evil Uno defeating Jason Hotch in a, a a match that combined like some good solid work with some comedy spots. I really, really liked it. The Warrior Wrestling Lucha title was defended. Champion Aramis successfully defended against Mr. Iguana. Warhorse was there as well, defeating Beast Man. Beast Man is like like think uh, if um if you think of, let's say, the Viking Raiders, let's say Ivar of the Viking Raiders, think of him, but like, I'd say 2.25 his size. The guy is massive and he has that kind of gimmick where he's like just a huge hulking. He's not, I wouldn't call him as athletic as Ivar is, but in look and presentation, like he's just a huge guy. Worked perfect with Warhorse, who's a little well, compared to him, a lot smaller. Uh, fantastic stuff. It was a fun match. We had um, there was a scramble for the uh, Warrior Wrestling title, the number one contendership for it, I should say. 
where Casey Navarro defeated, listen to this, Alan Angels, Brian Cage, Chandler Hopkins, Dante Martin, and TJP. But fun six-man scramble here. That was, a, it really was a blast. Casey Navarro is so crisp. And like a dope after the match, I'm like, how, why is Casey Navarro not, not signed? And I tweet that out. Casey Navarro himself responds to me. He's like, I'm going to sign with MLW, brother. I'm like, okay. He's fantastic. Everyone was fantastic here. Brian Cage, man. We've seen, I'm going to tell you. There's things that come across real well on TV. And maybe this is just me getting real excited because, you know, live wrestling is back, right? But you see things on TV like, Brian Cage doing a Topekan Hilo, right? Huge, you know, jacked up, enormous Brian Cage. And he's flying over the top rope. And you sort of look at that on your TV and you're like, oh, that's cool. But I swear to God, you see that shit live. You see it live. Brian, huge b dude. <laughs> Brian Cage doing a Topekan Hilo right in front of your eyes. I stood out on my seat and I popped. And I've seen him do the move before. Dozens of times before. But he does it live before me and lands onto five other guys. I'm like, yo! It's amazing. Dante Martin, man. Uh, AEW is doing him such a favor. Huge pop. Biggest pop of the night, though, went to Thunder Rosa. FYI. And, uh, and I... Uh, I'll talk about it a little later, but she, she is just over. Over. Period. Then, look, uh, the main reason where, uh, you know, I was sort of like, we have to make time to go out and do this. Jay White was there. Switchblade, King Switch, Bullet Club, Jay White. Not, you know, Jay White and he spells white with a, a Y instead of an I. RJ White, yours and mine. He was there, defeated Sam Adonis. I was so happy to see Jay White wrestle live. And he kind of has to work babyface in these situations. He kind of has to, but he doesn't. And he's so over. Fantastic. I was super thrilled to have seen him. Super happy. And we had uh, the main event, Trey Miguel, uh, who is the Warrior Wrestling Champion defeated Jake something in a great match, but man, everyone was gassed at that point. It was a big evening and it was hot. Like the heat and the humidity in Chicago was off the rails and Warrior Wrestling um, uh, performs outside, uh, not outside, but well, usually they do perform outside. This is the stadium series, right? But there was a risk of rain, so we all moved into the gymnasium of the school where they usually perform at. Whoa! Like, at that point in the evening, everyone was like, Ooh, you know, your energy level just goes down. At some point, it's just normal. But it was still a great match. It was a great evening. Absolutely great evening. And I was supposed to start talking about SummerSlam. But Warrior Wrestling, boys and girls, and they announced... Hey, here's something else that I learned about Warrior Wrestling. Because they've been around the block a couple of times. And like I said, they have some... They have high-caliber, tip-top talent. They Every show, they come in with amazing people which is which is a testament of how class an, an organization it is right they've only run 15 shows in their existence i was like really like only 15 i so they're going to be running their sweet 16 anniversary show and they've already announced that Bret Hart was going to be there as a you know special appearance special guest pretty sure he's not going to wrestle Maybe he might do an angle or something, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to wrestle. Uh, but that's really exciting for them. I'm really happy about it. So there we go. But uh, do subscribe to their YouTube channel. Um, they are on... I think their pay-per-views are on Fight most of the time. I'm not sure they're on a, uh, independentwrestling.tv, but I know they're on Fight. Uh, and it's just worth it. It's just worth it. It's, it's a great show. Class organization was awesome. And by the way, I met uh, um, the um, I met the uh, Get Show podcast guys over there as well. That was pretty fun. 
wrestling is bringing us all back together, boys and girls. It's amazing. All right, let's talk about Stars. So, so, the the summer the summer fest. Um. Yeah, like I said, like I said, I watched I watched the show the next day. Um, th- yeah, that's why I started talking about Warrior Wrestling. There you go, because I, because I didn't watch the show live, and I'm excited to hear what you guys thought of the show as well. DGMC, good to see you, by the way, and Zeus King, good to see you as well. Zeus Zeus is already like the king of the gods, right? He's already like the boss. Is it redundant to call yourself Zeus King? I'm just saying. Don't have anything against it. I'm just, you know, Zeus is already the boss. It's like saying, I'm, you know, King Boss. Ah, yeah. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you guys uh and gals think about um uh think about all of the uh th- thought about SummerSlam. Let's Let's just get right to it. Hey, Jermaine Presley, good to see you. Uh, I'll start from the top of the card down. Let's just go right ahead. Roman Reigns defeated John Cena for the uh, to retain the Universal Title. Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't. Th- I didn't think it was. Um, I didn't think it was a far cry from a boring match, an average match. I thought it was a pretty good match. Maybe my expectations were a little higher, and it didn't quite, uh, and it didn't quite hit the hit the heights that I had hoped it would. But it was a perfectly on a very uneven show, full of nonsense. This was a this was a a, a good main event, absolutely. Nothing to say on, on that front, of course. It, we can like we can get into the nitty gritty stuff, and we can we can talk about you know how um, we can talk about how you know Roman you know does too much monologuing and stuff like that. And then I thought they had I I thought the the middle part of the match was really good. I thought the 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 final third was a little messy, you know, with the near falls and all that. It was fine. Of course, the big news is Brock is back, right? Then Brock comes out. Roman hits the bricks. Paul Heyman is going to be involved in a love triangle. I love it. I I am completely okay with Brock Lesnar being back. For a company... Look, I'm going to throw WWE a bone here. For a company who doesn't have any stars, any, like, stars that transcend, that get people really excited... You know, if they feel that they have to go pick, uh, bring Brock back in to get some attention, to get some, to to get the, to get the blood pumping from the fans, good for them and good for Brock. Do I think that Brock showing up was a, uh, was a reaction to, um, was a reaction to CM Punk, which we're, of course, of course we're going to talk about, don't worry about it. Um, no, I don't. I, Brock doesn't operate on wrestling time anymore. And for like these negotiations had been on for a while. And this was probably the plan all along for Brock to come in at SummerSlam after Cena was done so that Roman could have another credible contender, right? That's what makes the most sense. Uh, I, if anyone I think really believes that, and and this is my gut, but I, you know, I have nothing else to go on but my gut. Regardless, um, <laughs> I think I sincerely believe actually that if you if you believe that Brock was brought in as a response to CM Punk, I think you don't know how Brock Lesnar operates. I don't I don't think that's how it works. They didn't call him like on Friday, like Brock. Brock's like, yeah, I'm coming. I'll be I'll be there to save your company, Vince. That's not what he's about. And he shouldn't be at, at this stage either. That's fine. Apparently he has a 
one year deal. Here's the rumor, 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 rumor. One year deal with about eight matches on Doc, which is just enough, which is just enough to, um, to, which is just enough for him to be cool and win a title and have a couple of defenses. Right? Because you know Brock isn't putting mid-carters over. That's not what he's there for. He's there for the big spots. That's where they want him, regardless of what he'd want to do. That's where they want him. I think we're going to have... I think we're going to have a, a Brock Lesnar universal title reign before the end of the year. I'm pretty sure. And then Roman wins Royal Rumble, see? Uh... Hopefully I didn't trigger, I didn't trigger too many people with that one. Hopefully. <laughs> Anakin JMT, good to see you. Welcome to the chat. I'll get to your super chat in just a second. Anyway, uh, uh, decent main event, fun surprise for the end. Uh, although, it, you know, it's completely in WWE's wheelhouse. Oh, let's pull out Brock. Um, The Bobby Lashley-Goldberg match was absolutely dreadful. It, it, come, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's ultimately, right, the big, big deal here. It's like, it's not even a question of, uh, it's not even a question of the, the Goldberg match being be, being bad because Goldberg was in it. Because, you know, essentially, that's what it was. But, Lashley, Bobby Lashley, the almighty Bobby Lashley, can't secure a proper win on Bill Goldberg. What does that say to you? That is not what an absolute shit finish. And there's no way, no two ways to go about it. Especially <laughs> Goldberg's knee. Oh, his knee, right? That was exacerbated when MVP on the outside had his cane and sort of tapped the back of his knee <laughs> with it. And Goldberg took two full steps before selling it, before going, ow. And that's the knee that brought us to ref stoppage, which is bullshit. I mean, the match was bullshit regardless. Why would you not give Bob Lashley the big win over Goldberg? I, look, I, that, that I don't understand. But if there's anything this match has, has clarified for me is that Goldberg does not have his big match sheen anymore. I don't care how excited you get when you hear the name Goldberg. You And I think I'm parsing this, at least in my soul, I feel it. I'm parsing myself very uh, 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 fairly from my, from my thoughts regarding Goldberg in general. In this situation here, Bill Goldberg uh, ended up uh, his. It showed to us, excuse me, that he doesn't have that big match main eventness anymore because the audience turned on him. They didn't want him. If you have a big match guy in your midst, the audience is not going to turn on him. And you can't say, oh, well, you know, it's Chicago and Chicago's so weird. You know, one of these weird towns, you know, like, oh, they're in Montreal. Montreal lives on their own rules. Chicago, they're in Vegas. And it's not a 10,000 seat arena that you're filling up. Got yourself a stadium. And you got people who are outright booing Goldberg, cheering for Lashley, cheering for Lashley. When he's got the full Nelson on Gageberg, Gold, Goldberg's son, he's got the full Nelson on it. And what you're supposed to feel here is, oh, what a despicable man this Bobby Lashley is to be hiring this teenage boy. But no, people are popping for it. And uh, I'll be honest, you know, get, I was there too. I was like, get David Flair too out of there. Because it's all nonsense. Goldberg doesn't have the thing. He doesn't have it anymore. 
And he doesn't even have the strength to pick up guys properly anymore. It's just, it's just nonsense. It was not, we knew it was going to be nonsense. Right? I think, chat, back me up here. Did we know? Back me up for real. Did we know that Goldberg versus Lashley was going to be nonsense? I think we did. But what puts it over the top here and makes it a, a talking point is uh, is the fact that Bobby Lashley wasn't able to, to secure a proper win on Bill Goldberg. Now, where I think we're going with this, and I'm sorry if this again is going to rattle... Rattle your bones here. I think we're getting Lashley Goldberg too in Saudi Arabia. I think that I think this is what it's building to because they talked about it on Monday again. They they referenced if if the program was done and you know how WWE works. If the program was done, we'd waltz into Monday night and no one would mention that Gageberg got manhandled and the knee and. The, we just all be moving on to the to the new program. But they brought it back up again, and that is your clear indication that they're doing the Goldberg thing again. And Goldberg's going to come out on Monday, probably, this Monday, and he's going to be like, I had to rehab my knee for a full 10 days before coming back for you, uh, Bob Lashley, and you did something that you're not supposed to do. You put your hands on my son. And I'd be like, motherfucker, Goldberg, you put your kid in the line of fire here. This is on you, pal. Poor dad. Uh, poor dad. Shit dad Goldberg. <laughs> Thank you for backing me up, Anakin, by the way. I knew I was right. <laughs> Jermaine Presley left us a super chat. Thank you very much, Jermaine. It says, I could see Roman losing the title to a baby-faced Brock Lesnar at the Saudi Arabia show. That's that's not bad. That go, sort of goes into what I was, uh, I was saying earlier, right? Where I think we're getting a Brock Lesnar universal title run by the end of the year. That I'm convinced of. And you just made perfect sense to me, Jermaine. Absolutely. It, first of all, it, the big rumor going around is that Brock is on SmackDown and he's being... Considered to be a baby face, right? So yeah, I think it'd make a lot of sense. It'd make tons of sense. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. What match are we up to next? What are we talking about? Edge defeating Seth Rollins. This was a lot of fun. I match of the night, I think, unquestionably. I think it was very good. Smart, solid, well executed. Like a, a good, intelligent wrestling match. And both guys really put in the effort. Like this, I would, I think I will argue, and I don't think it's that hard of an argument to win, that this was Edge's best match since coming back to WWE. Uh, and and you can pull out the uh, greatest match of all time, whatever they called it uh, last year. Um, you know, the, you can pull that out, but it would, you know, it was long and, you know, there was editing and so on and so forth. This, like a, as a straight up wrestling match, Fantastic stuff. I thought it was very good. I really thought it was very, very, very good. Kind of surprised that Rollins ate it. And it also made me realize, because the crowd was into it, they were excited about it, but imagine if this feud had been properly booked, like, excitingly, instead of just one week Edge cuts a promo in the ring and, you know, looks at the camera like this. <laughs> and then the next week it's Seth Rollins cutting a promo and then you know going <laughs> week after week if they had actually like created something some anticipation some excitement I think this match would have been through the roof it's a very good match don't get me wrong uh, Charlotte Flair defeated Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley to uh, become once again the <laughs> WWE Raw Women's Champion. Um, nothing wrong with with this match. Like this, you know. I think I, you know, this was a spot fest, and I think it's okay. And I think that's what the women needed to do. I think that's what they needed to do. 
to make this match work during this weird ass pay per view. Um, I think that had, if they had done gone any other way, I don't think it would have been as good. I feel like when these three work together, it it connects. But then when you start breaking them apart, that's where it gets a little more iffy. And I was wondering on Saturday, uh, Sunday, excuse me, when I was watching this, I was wondering, okay, well, are we done with the Nikki Cross experiment at this point? Is Nikki A.S.H., uh, is, is, is she uh, is she done? But uh, apparently not. Like, they're, they're, they're getting right back into, uh, they're getting right back into uh, the... Uh, in, into a uh, some sort of program, a tag team program. They're probably going to send. I'm fe- I'm feeling like Rhea and Nikki are going to be tag champions, you know, because ta- oh, they're so, they're so different. One is very tall, one is very short. One is a badass, the other one is a a cute, adorable person who thinks she's a superhero. Oh, these oddball pairings, you know, you can't find. And when you actually have tag teams in WWE who do get along and who do work together and who are, you know, partners, like, you know, the Viking Raiders can't even put them on TV. It's always got to be these little wacky. Because they're doing the same thing. I I hope you guys have noticed and gals have noticed that, uh, that they're doing the same. They're doing RKO, bro, RK bro, excuse me. With uh, Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. I hope you realize that right now it's the exact same thing. Only less silly because, you know, and with less drug references. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's fine. That was all right. Oh, look at who we have here. It's Kristen Ashley, the first lady of the Mr. Warren Hayes show. Yeah. Over on the Bell to Bell's account. How you doing, Kristen? Hanging out there. Right over there. <laughs> and I put over your office hard at first. Said how jealous I was of it. Good to see you, Kristen. Good to see you too, AK Germany96. Nice to see you as well. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, uh, we also had Drew McIntyre defeating Jinder Mahal. This was this sucked. It just sucked. It sucked on all levels. It was not good. There was no heat. No one was interested in this. And do you know why there was no heat? Because Jinder Mahal did not wrestle once during this feud. He didn't rest. He didn't wrestle during this feud. I think at the beginning or mid June, before this feud actually became like a feud. Feud. He wrestled once. But ever since he like officially jumped into the program with Drew, you know, and the sword and the motorbike and all this bullshit, it's all been Shanky and and and, and, and Shanky and uh, Dipsho. What's he called? What's what's the other guy's name called? Shanky and and Jam- and Jamal. J- I can't remember. It, uh, the point is that Drew's been f- fighting those two guys as opposed to the guy who sh- he should be fighting for the pay-per-view. And even if, and if anything, Jinder should have been having squash matches on Raw. He really should have, as opposed to just like not doing anything because <laughs> no one thought Jinder was going to be Drew. No one. Yeah, if you don't heat up your opponents for your baby faces, what's the point? Veer, thank you, Anakin. Veer, Shanky and Veer. It's, don't you guys find that it's, Shanky and Veer sounds like a a, a name for a, a local craft beer brewer, right? Got all six varieties of Shanky and Veer. Here we have this season IPA. <laughs> All that shit. <laughs> oh. All right, now we're going to talk about the big thing, right? Becky Lynch is back. I don't know if you heard. Okay, now we got to break down the... We have to break this Bianca stuff here for just a second. Your neighbors are fine. We're gonna <laughs> it's, not, it's not that late. Um, We got to break this down. Bianca... Sasha match didn't happen, and they, they, you know, 
there's an argument to be made for card subject to change, but there is also an argument to, um, well, this is out of our control and we have to change, we have to change the match. Now I understand, I, here's a bunch of things that I understand. I, 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 I don't think WWE should have guided the whole thing right into a promo package before the match and let people believe that this was going to happen to the very last minute. I think that's bullshit. And I think that is a very strong case for for um, false advertising. Now, let's say they pull Sasha out of the match, right? And, that, and they say, like, they pull Sasha off of it and they say, listen, who do we have then? That we can announce as that we can announce as a, a replacement where people won't be too disappointed. They have no one outside of one person, but we're going to get to that in a second. But they have no one active on the roster, active, that they could just be like, okay, well, let's drop and would be on the kind of same level because they don't heat anyone up. They don't heat anyone up. They only heat people up when it's time for title defenses. Otherwise, you're floundering. And then people wonder why no one in the women's division on SmackDown or Raw are uh, are over, right? So they have no one at the ready that they can just pull the trigger on. So, of course, booking committee sitting around, you know, they're sitting around and taking notes. And Bruce is like, well, who who are we going to put in? Oh, well, Car- Carmella is available, but she just fought Carmella the night before. We can't announce this. People are going to go ape shit and they're not going to watch the show. They're going to be pissed off. And they're absolutely right. So, Absolutely right. So I can, I understand the conundrum that they're in, but at the same time, don't pull this kind of shit. Now, I would argue that instead of doing the Carmella bit and and leading, if if on Saturday they had tweeted out, Sasha Banks is unable to compete. Quite unfortunate. Bianca Belair will have a surprise opponent at Summers. Then people get stoked. Then people get excited. The, a la CM Punk, right? Then they get really, really, they get really, really, uh, they, 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 they get excited for it. They get the, the anticipation bills. They're like, Becky's coming back. Becky's coming back. Becky's coming back. She has to, it has to be her. And then they just, just bring Becky out. For, what the, forget the fucking nonsense with Carmella. That doesn't make it. Doesn't, it didn't help anyone. I mean, the whole thing didn't help anyone. But you know what I mean. Like it, it, it didn't make it cooler. It didn't make the surprise more prevalent. But anyway, Carmella comes in, but she ne- she doesn't fight because Becky returns, and as. Anakin JMT a little earlier on it left us as a super chat. Thank you very much, Anakin, by the way. Appreciate it. He said that he turned off SummerSlam at this part. He turned off SummerSlam after Becky. Me. Disgraceful. Anakin, I, Anakin's a huge Becky fan. And I can I, and I and I sympathize with that, man. I, I love Becky Lynch myself. This is a universally bad move. It's a bad move. I don't have to walk you through what happened. You all know. Becky manhandle slams Bianca. And people acting like the manhandle slam, which is a rock bottom, really. People acting like it's her, her a, a new move. She she was using it before going off to, to, to give birth to her child. She had been using it. But they bring it back and enforce, right? It's like, but I'll tell you what was shit here. And even before we get to the moment, I, I've i been talking to you guys about how I think Bianca Belair is so extremely poorly booked as far as her character goes. If she goes, if she goes around the locker room in WWE and she's going, I am the EST, I am the EST, I'm the best, I'm the strongest, I'm the fat, she should be cocky. And you can do a good cocky baby face without being an asshole but you can you, Steve Austin right but it is possible but no 
Of course, she's a baby face. She's a champion. So she be, she turns into this, I'm just happy to be here kind of thing. I was bullied when I was, when I was a kid. Like all the fucking tropes that WWE slap on to their champions. Every single time. They're baby face champions. Every single time. She's got them. When they could be building her as a champion with legitimate attitude. That she, that she, that who knows she's the best and she can't be beat. And that's exciting. But no, now she's just, you know, just same as everyone. Same as like when Rhea won the fucking title. Like, oh, I'm happy to be here. So when Becky disposes of Carmella and says, what do you say, Las Vegas? Do you guys want to see this match? And then it's like, everyone gets excited. Let's do it right now. You have, you have Bianca Belair, like a star in the making. As someone who is... Already larger than life, a, a bright shining star in this company. She goes, she does one of these. She goes, she starts thinking about it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I get that it's Becky Lynch and they're establishing her. She's, she's, you know, she's the face of the women's division. You could argue she's the face of the company. She's, she is the company's top baby face, or at least in, what's, why would Bianca Belair, though, who it thrives on competition, didn't they have vignettes where they we saw her jump hurdles and say, I like to compete, I like to prove myself. Why doesn't she just go, you're on, let's do it. But no, she's like, she has this moment where she, and then she goes, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm like, what am I looking at? In the meantime, in the weeks before, we had Nikki Cross as champion going like, mm, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'll be able to beat Rhea Ripley tonight, but I'll sure give it my best darn try. What, is, what the fuck? That's not endearing. It's not something I look for in my champions, male or female. I don't understand that. I, like, I don't understand the entirety of this segment. It, it, and it goes completely counter to what Bianca Belair is supposed to be. But then in execution, she's... Oh, well. she And she was even... Told, when she was interviewed after the after the match for the, the, that, that party thing that they were throwing, she was like, I was just happy to be there in that moment. Like, fuck off. You lost the match. Be pissed off. Don't have to be pissed off at the booking if you're going to do the kayfabe shit. At least be... Yeah, well, I'm disappointed I lost the match. It was stupid, and I should have been more prepared, or whatever. Not be like, oh, I'm just happy to be in the moment. I hate that shit. I really do. And it doesn't do Bianca a service. It doesn't do Bianca service at all. And then Becky, that's it. Becky lays her out. She gets the three count in like 20 seconds, right? 25 seconds according to cage match here. The fuck, man? <laughs> what the actual fuck are you doing with Becky Lynch? And by the way, want to say hello to uh want to say hello to uh Injection 2K's in the chat. Nice to see him. I don't understand this. And people have I've 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 been reading Twitter and I've been going on on all sides, and I'm trying to get a a feel for what for what people liked about it. and and I don't and I don't see many people liking this, and with reason, because leave it to WWE to bring back their top babyface, and I am going to stand by this. I am going to stand by this. WWE's number one babyface has been Becky Lynch even in her absence. There is no one, there is no male or female, there is not a bigger babyface in that company than, um, than Becky Lynch. Leave it to them to create a moment where people are excited and instead of giving them what they want, they just overcome make things overcomplicated and create a situation where we talk about everything else except the match except the what we're supposed to be watching 
where once again we get a we get a a a a a, a complete portrait of how much WWE overthinks and overcomplicates everything. It's so frustrating. So, <laughs> there are so many other ways they could have done this. So many other ways. One of them giving a competitive match. A surprise Becky Lynch return match. Imagine if that had happened. And imagine if she had defeated Bianca that way. We would not be sitting here saying that this has been... It has... It's not good for Bianca. It's not good for Becky. Good for no one here. Why would your why would your top baby face come in and do that, right? It's good for no one. But we would not be sitting here talking about it. We'd be saying, isn't this great? Look at what WWE did to counter CM Punk or whatever. Surprise, Becky Lynch return gets the match win. And I've thrown that theory out. And I've had people tell me, maybe Becky wasn't ready to wrestle. Then don't fucking book a match. You know, like that's always the thing. Then don't. Book a match if she's not ready to go. It's it's like suddenly when they I say this often, but it's like suddenly when 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 a wrestling company does a thing, it becomes this invariable, right? It becomes like this this moment in time that can't be moved around. But they could have just decided to be like, "Mom, Becky's not ready. Let's not do it. Let's do something else. It won't be as great, but when Becky comes back, it'll be exciting." They could have. Again, not decided to do it, build to an exciting match at, what's the next one, TLC? Get people invested in that, have Becky win there. They want to make her a heel now, apparently, have her heal it up as we go along. A bit of, like Roman, right? Roman's heel turn was a bit of a slow burn. But besides, why would you turn your top baby face? Why would you do that? Because that's the rumor going around is that she's going to be on SmackDown. And she's going to be a heel. Why would you do that? It's dumb. People want to cheer for... People... Did you hear that pop? People want to cheer for Becky. They were excited for her to come back. And they're like, mm, no, but we need her as a heel. You don't need her as a heel on SmackDown. You just don't. And on top of that, on top of that, you don't need, you, you need that kind of babyface energy. And you've tried turning her heel before. What makes you think it's going to work out this time? Because Becky is, is in on the idea? Because that's the other rumor going around that Becky, this is something that Becky asked. How does that make it better? It doesn't make it better for me. It doesn't enhance my viewing experience. Knowing that Becky Lynch is is the one who came up with the idea didn't enhance my my appreciation of Nikki Ash's booking. Knowing that Nikki Cross came up with the superhero gimmick, there is such a thing as bad ideas, and these are bad ideas. I don't care who's at the source of it. I don't care if the if the talent is okay with it. These are bad ideas. Even if Becky is okay with it. Someone should have sat her down and said, Becky, you're, you're the only baby face we got. We can't turn you. And we don't need to turn you. Maybe they might turn, maybe they might pull off the tweener stuff. This is WWE. They overthink everything and they can't stick to the basics. They can't give the audience what they want. Honest to God. All that people wanted at this point, and Anakin is a good sounding board for me on this, because Anakin is a huge Becky Lynch guy. He loves her. And he was so disappointed at this. Ooh, yeah. I can get behind him. I can get behind him on this saying, I, I don't understand why Becky Lynch, why they're doing this to Becky Lynch. And it, and, and it upsets me as a fan, as a fan of the product, as a fan of the wrestler. It doesn't make it better that it was her idea. It doesn't. It doesn't 
It doesn't excuse the idea. It's not the, oh, well, I, 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 bad creative is bad creative no matter who comes up with it. You've got one company who systematically sends its audiences home happy. And you got the other one that convolutes everything for the sake of, oh, being swervy and anything can happen in the WWE. Frankly, bullshit, bullshit out of right. Um, I've got a couple of super chats here that we can talk about. Anakin JMT left us a super chat. Thank you very much, Anakin. He says, I'll try to keep my thoughts to five minutes on the post show. Oh, that's all right. That's what we're, we're, we're there to talk. That's okay. But you can join us on the post show if you become a member of the Mr. Warren Hayes Show channel. Just hit the join button. You can do it directly in the chat as well. And you can join us for this exclusive members only chat where we talk about, we we're talking about SummerSlam and WWE this tonight. And take over 36. Thank you for the super chat, Anakin. J Jermaine Presley left two super chats in regard to this. Thank you very much, Jermaine. Let's go with the first one. It says, NBC Universal is pissed off right now because SmackDown is stacked. So if Becky Lynch heel turn doesn't go well, I can see Becky and Seth going to Raw. But if Becky Lynch heel turn does, if Becky Lynch's heel turn does go okay, I can see Sasha Banks and Edge moving to Raw in the draft. That's very, very interesting. Um... You know, I, I don't know. Like, I, you know, I, I'm I'm not in these boardrooms. I'm not privy to these conversations. Although sometimes I wish I did, because I'm sure they're very interesting. But I wouldn't put it past NBC Universal to be disappointed in how Fox is getting Brock is getting Becky has Roman. I'd be kind of pissed if I was working for NBC. Got Drew on the other side. Alexa Bliss and all her magic. God damn, that match was bad. My God. Of course, you know what I'm talking I'm talking about Alexa Bliss and Eva Marie. And here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. I... <laughs> I don't like the Alexa Ooh, Bliss magic yeah. stuff to begin with. I think it's way out there. I think it's, it doesn't work for me. I think it's dumb. But on top of that, you have Eva Marie, who is bad at <clears throat> everything. She's bad at everything. She can't wrestle. Don't, don't be confused by the fact that she can do community theater she can't cut a promo. She has she has no natural charisma. She just fits a, a very conventional model of beauty. And that's about it. But she's bad at everything. She spent more time working the doll in this match than she did working Alexa. Awful. And I'm not, I, I, like, there's other stuff that happened on the card, but like a lot of matches that really didn't connect or anything. Like there was just nothing matches. But I do want to point out that I I enjoyed Sheamus and uh, Damian Priest. You guys know at this point, I think Sheamus is one of the backbones of of Raw. I think he's every time. I think everything he's been involved in since the fall has been fantastic. I think he he's uh, he's being paired with people that can work his strengths and that he can, and he himself can work his strengths off of. He's he's a solid solid upper mid card guy. I'm not I'm definitely not championing championing him to become a uh, WWE champion at this, at this point. I don't think that's I don't think that's his role and I don't think I like I I think he's perfect in the role that he is right now. Upper mid card, super solid guy, delivers consistent, big man, hard hitting matches. And that's exactly what we got here with Sheamus and Priest. And Priest did a great job too. Sheamus working his back, right? And Priest included that in all his offense that he was doing. Not at some point was like, oh, I'm going to stop selling the back at some point. He just worked oh, yeah. it the entire match. That great mid air broke kick 
that led to a legit near fall. If you rewatch that SummerSlam match, I'll tell you this. If you rewatch that SummerSlam match, you will see that the audience was not all that much into the match until the end. And though, that's because those guys worked to get that audience on their side. And that's a sign of a well, uh, a well executed professional wrestling match. If the uh, if you have no heat from the audience to begin with, but you're able to draw them in with your action, with your with the, with uh, with your storytelling, that's what they did here. And I wish that so that's the thing is that WWE can do this shit. I have proof right here they can do. This isn't a five star classic. Don't get me wrong. I'm, you know it's it's not it's not something that I'm gonna put on my end of the year list. But I watch this match. I'm, like, I'm entertained. This is fun. This is good. This is a pro wrestling match. I like it. Not that WWE can do it. They just don't want to do it. And then the, the mid-air road kicker, that's what I was talking about. It led to a legitimate, exciting near fall. Where it's like, ah! I w- like, I was sure the match was done. It's great shit. I loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was a really, really fun match. Great stuff. The, the rest after that is like, oh, whatever. Nothing. I'm not going to sit here and talk about Dominic Mysterio, if that's okay with you guys. But instead, I will talk about, uh, I will, first of all, I'll say hello to Pluggo, who just joined us from over there at lovewrestling.ca. How you doing, Pluggo? We got brother, brother Hero, who left us a super chat, and also welcome to the chat. How are you doing? Talking about uh, the uh, Becky Lynch... Um, uh, the uh, Becky Lynch squash again. He says, this felt racist like when they squashed Kofi. You have to wonder, right? Like, I can't, I, I obviously, you know, <laughs> I'm a middle-aged white dude. I can't sit here and talk about whether this was racist or not. You know, I, I'm, but I did see a lot of people of color who I follow on Twitter, people that I really, really like and independent wrestlers as well who were shocked at this. Um, And I can definitely understand, I can definitely uh, say that the optics are not great on this. And yeah, it does feel like the Kofi thing. Just completely obliterating a potential legacy here. I, I, I don't understand it. And the optics are horrible. And why would you do this to Bianca, who was... A, uh, and is, um, I don't want to erase what you, but who is a symbol of achievement, right? She she did represent something for people of color, for women of color more specifically. It, that, but you're right, Brother Hero. It's another, uh, it, it, it's another level to add on to this cake of garbage that just makes the decision all the more baffling. It's weird. Jermaine Presley left another super chat. Thank you very much, Jermaine, for all the super chats tonight. I appreciate it. He says, any news on Sasha Banks? Will she be back for the MSG show uh, on um, in, on September 10? I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm not, I'm no scoopster. I don't know what's going on with Sasha, but we, I think everything's fine. I really think everything's fine. Um, hopefully, Sasha Banks is all right. She's healthy. I'm not going to speculate why she's out, but I don't think it's anything job-related. Contract. We get like this once in a while when Sasha disappears, right? Do you remember the last time this happened? Everyone was sh- she was off in Japan, you know, and she was training with Mako Satomura, and then people said, "Oh, she's leaving. She's going to do a Stardom tour," and so on and so forth. It didn't happen. It- we get like this with Sasha. I think Sasha is a WWE lifer. WWE needs to throw everything at this woman to keep her. They, she, she is an absolute star. This is someone that you go out of your way to keep happy. I don't think she's going anywhere. She'll, I don't know if she'll be at the at the show because we don't know what's going on specifically. But I don't, I, you know, now there's the because it's so fashionable these days to talk about jumping ship and contract situations. I don't think I don't think Bianca. Uh, I I don't feel like Sasha's thing is uh, is an employment issue. Isn't the Mandal? Isn't she going to be taping the Mandal? I don't know when, when the Mandalorian season is going to happen again. So. I'm, I've read things that she's going to have a bigger, her her character's going to have a bigger role in the next season of The Mandalorian. I don't know. I'll bring her back as a heel. 
Oh, she already is a heel. That she'll they'll bring her back as a baby face. Yeah, that because that's that's what WWE does. Um, how about some uh, some quick notes on Takeover Thirty Six? Um, hope you guys are having a good time. By the way, hope you're enjoying it here in the chat. Mandalorian's f- f- r- was the the uh, filming has been wrapped up. I'm being told so. Just gonna give some quick NXT 36 um, thoughts. A relatively average show, like nothing. Again, nothing bad, but nothing that really stands out. And I, I want to, I want to get into AEW and the, sh- and, and 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 all the shows. Um, so just some quick, some quick thoughts here. Uh, Cameron Grimes defeated LA Knight to regain the million dollar title. I still don't know what that implicates. I, I don't know why that matters. I, I, anyway. I think this was the best match that the both of these guys had together, but uh, I'm good with them moving on from this program. And interestingly enough, for, like, okay, I want to say too many things at once. Interestingly enough, this is one, this is a program where I was more entertained by the shenanigans, the, the outside vignettes than the, the actual matches themselves, I thought Cameron Grimes did. Cameron Grimes is great in the in the role that he's in, and you know the the butler the who who didn't quite you know completely submit to everything. I I I think he did his role really well here. I like that. L.A. Knight should be on main. I don't know what he's doing in NXT. Raquel Gonzalez uh, defeated Dakota Kai to hold on to the women's title. To my surprise. Um, you know, and everyone sort of says, oh, Dakota's being called up, which is, you know, usually, yeah, yeah it's the refrain you hear every time when a woman loses a, uh, a, in a championship match on NXT. It's like, oh, she's being called up. That's usually what we hear. I'm disappointed. I'm really disappointed because I was like, yeah, let, let's go. Dakota Kai, LFG, let's make it happen. But no, it's like, I don't know. Raquel hangs on to it, and uh, Kaylee Ray came out. NXT UK, former NXT UK Women's Champion, recently lost the title to Miko Satomura. And, whoa, knocked over my microphone. Apologies for that. <laughs> um, the... Um, but yeah, we're, as far as uh, as far as Miko Satomura goes, not Miko Satomura, uh, Kay- Kaylee Ray goes. She comes out clearly. She's a, setting herself up to be the next challenger. I would argue that she'd be a really good candidate to take the title off of Raquel. The thing is that no one knows who Kaylee Ray really is. That's why when her music started, there was no reaction in the audience. You know, Kristen and I went woo because uh, we know Kaylee Ray and she's really great at what she does. She's a fantastic wrestler, but. You know, I, I think the writing's on the wall on this one. Raquel is losing her title at this point. Uh, match of the night, of course. Matt and, pff, match of the year in WWE, and this is the reason why you need why you need to watch uh, this takeover. Ilya Dragunov defeated Walter to become the NXT uh, United Kingdom champion. Fantastic, fantastic match. And there is nothing else to that you can actually you can slather all the, the 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 compliments and the accolades that you want on this match. And this ruled. It ruled. It was a violent, despicable match. I tweeted out when this match started because this was the match I was most looking for. I'm not gonna lie. This was the match I was most looking for, and I was like, uh, "Here comes the match. <laughs> Here comes the match." Where, uh, what, no, I tweeted out that, uh, let's go, Walter, Ilya, make us forget that wrestling is a work. My God. It, now, was it as good as their NXT UK match last year? I would say no, but not by much. Oh, yeah. And I think part of it was just the novelty of last year coming completely out of net left field over the fuck over on, on NXT UK where no one was expecting that kind of level of match. It was just outstanding. I loved it. 
It's just so brutal. And and the story they told here was that Ilya came prepared. He 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 learned from his previous match with with Walter and he was able to counter stuff. He was ready for stuff. Of course he had that invincible attitude that never say die attitude that pushed him through which he had in the other match but Walter was just too much for him in the first one here they were he 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 was on better footing pulled out the big one this ruled it ruled and there's nothing even close on this card that you go like mm, close mm, but uh, mm, this one is a close second no mm -mm -mm. Rule. Match of the year for WWE. It will be an overall match of the year candidate. It will be on lists. This is, in my opinion, this is a better match than uh, Cesaro versus Roman Reigns, which I already considered to be a match, which is still a match of the year candidate, but I think this one is better. Uh, can, Roman Reigns and Cesaro had a fantastic uh, match at uh, WrestleMania Backlash. Cyclops is better than Wolverine is in the chat. Nice to see you. And he left us a super chat as well. Thank you very much. He says, I want Frankie as the next champ, to be honest. Frankie Monet for the women's title. I wish they'd have her wrestle more. Right? Taya rules. I really want her to wrestle more. But I, I, I think Frankie Monet's trajectory is unequivocally the NXT women's champion. I think that's what it is. She's great. I love her. And I agree with you. I mean, next champ, probably not, but uh, she will be. I'm with you on that. Thank you very much for the super chat, by the way. I appreciate it. I want to say hello to Conrad of Everything Pro Wrestling. Good to see you. Welcome to the chat. Yes, I'm over in Milwaukee. <laughs> um... Kyle O'Reilly defeated Adam Cole in the best uh, two out of three uh, falls match. I really liked the street fight par portion of it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I loved... Here's the thing. I loved the beating that Adam Cole delivered to Kyle between the second and third falls. I thought that was... I thought that was fresh. It, it, it was good, you know? And the visual of the cages, the cage sides, like, lowering down each individually and then pausing because the guys are fighting outside the ring. It's like, we can't... Ooh. Um, because we can't, you know, start close up the match because no one's, you know, I loved it. I, I, I dug it. I thought it was great. What a weird third fall. Don't ask me if I know what's up with Adam Cole. I don't. I, I, I don't know why I'd know. My gut said at this point, I'm very 50, very 50, 50 on it. Very 50. I don't know. I feel like he might stay at the, you know, the reports have been very deliberate in their language, right? The reports have been very, very deliberate saying Adam Cole is done with NXT, right? Oh, is he going to be called up? Or is he done with NXT in the sense that he's completely done? There were reports he might show up at Dynamite. Those were shot down. Like, like right now, the whole Adam Cole thing is a mess. It's a mess to follow. If you want my suggestion, wait to see where the cards fall. Because everyone's reporting stuff left and right. And then we're getting confirmed. And yes, I can confirm that this confirm that this reporter who confirmed this confirmation can can be confirmed. It's like it's just nonsense at this point. Detach yourselves from it. Be in and let Adam Cole get some rest. Play some video games with Tyler Breeze and and uh, on his on his Twitch channel and get excited when he shows back up somewhere. And Samoa Joe kicked a carrying cross into uh, right up onto Raw with a with a brand new mask. <laughs> uh, very nondescript main event. Samoa Joe's a third time NXT champion. Good for him. Carrying cross is uh, carrying cross. And the thing is, is that we've been, especially Kristen and I, we've been laughing. It's like, what is his gimmick? You know, it's like. He, He's a centurion. He's like, he's a Roman, you know, a centurion. Is that his thing? And, you know, Vince saw the, you know, the, the centurion like uh, uh, a belt. I don't know exactly what you call it. You know, this sort of, it's not a, it's not a skirt, but you, not a kilt. You know what I'm talking about. And 
The next thing you know, he comes, on Monday, he comes out with the thing. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. How bad I'm... I wonder... How, I wonder if Karrion Cross is like, man, it wasn't that bad in Impact. Like, I know Impact were dicks with them, right? Withholding money and all that shit. But, man, sometimes he's got to be like... Mm. Anyway, it wasn't this bad. <laughs> I just laughed when he came out on Monday. Poor guy. And the thing is, from everything that I hear about Karrion Cross, and this is why I don't... Apparently, he's a super nice guy. He's like one of the nicest dudes out there. Like, someone had once told me, too nice to be in wrestling, kind of. Too good of a guy. Fucking idiot. All right. Let's talk about some AEW. I've been to these shows. I've been I've um, I've been taking the opportunity to uh to be here in the, in the uh, in the Midwest to head out to Chicago for instance, to be at the first dance at the United Center. Um and it and it's happenstance, really. I didn't necessarily plan it that way. It's just like things fell fell into place. And I was like, "Hey, I'll be there. Hey, let's do it." And Kristen was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Uh, and I could not have been happier to be. Um, I, I I could not have been. Oh, sorry. That's right. Anakin left us a super chat. Excuse me, Anakin. Thank you very much. Uh, he says, "Excuse me, Frankie Monet is Taya Valkyrie's dog." Yes. I I frankly, I still believe that. I still I still believe that Frankie Monet is actually the dog, and Taya is still Taya. I just splashed water on my glasses, taking a sip of water. That, my friends, that takes some skill. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, the first dance was really good. It was a good show to be at. Because it was a historic moment. And that's what we were expecting. Like, here's the thing. As it stands right now, AEW is building goodwill for itself. Because they are promising stuff and they are delivering. Or they're hinting at things. They didn't promise, per se, CM Punk. But they were heavily hinting that he was going to be there, right? That he was coming in. So they didn't, you know, they did not right say CM Punk is going to be there, but they were hinting at it. And that was, in a certain sense, worse than confirming because you're always like, is he going to be there? Because you saw the tweets on the day, on last Friday, you'd see people saying, what if CM Punk doesn't show up? Uh, Twitter's going to burn it, which hope he doesn't show up so I can see Twitter melt down. You know, you saw those. It would have been an interesting social experiment. Agreed. But they're building this 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 goodwill for themselves by delivering delivering on promises or on expectations. Still have to deliver on that women's division, but you know, that great women's division they had promised us from the get-go. But you get my drift. CM Punk hadn't shown up. I, I would have been a, a little afraid because the United Center is a big, it's a big place. It's it's huge. It's really, it's big. And like if if he hadn't showed up and people started to riot, like we were up in, we we didn't you know we didn't have ringside seats. We were up up in the, in the nosebleeds. I mean, we probably could have escaped fairly well, but then you have like fourteen thousand other people below you, just like. Ah, that would have been terrible. But he showed up. The point is, no no point in speculating. He showed up. CM Punk. I have I've never been in a in an arena that made such a huge concerted noise. A wall of sound is what it was. And when when the first few bars when the first few bars of 
uh, not even the first few bars, when the initial riff of um, Cult of Personality hit. Like, and I mean, like, just that place erupts. Can't even hear the theme song at this point. You can't hear a thing. You get the screens with the, you know, the, the thing and see punk. And... Place goes nuts. There's people, you saw the guy, but there were other people crying in the audience. They, they, they focused on that one guy, but there were other people in the audience, just like in tears. Strangers high-fiving each other. That's fantastic, man. I mean, they, and then they say, me, why do you cry at wrestling? Wrestling's supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to. It's supposed to make you feel... It's supposed to give you something back. Of course, you have to have heels and baby faces and so on and so forth. But at some point, you need that generosity from your from the promotion. To be like, here, take this and enjoy it. Of I've seen the arguments. Of, oh, the pop wouldn't have never been as big in Chicago. When what kind of fucking bad take is that? Of course not. Of course it wouldn't have been that big. But that's why they did it in Chicago. What are you talking about? The guy is intrinsically linked to Chicago. It's his hometown. It's part of his thing. But being there, I swear to God, it's it was the most deafening thing, and. I was in awe of it, quite frankly. You saw the promo. You heard the promo. I don't want to have. I don't have to go through it again. You know, ultimately, Rampage had about fifteen minutes of wrestling overall on the show. Sixteen. No one complained. <laughs> no one bitched. Because that's not what you were there for. You weren't there for the. You know, the five-star Pac Kenny Omega match. It's not, it's not what it, that's not what it was about. You wanted to be there to be a part of a, a, a moment of history. That's what you wanted there. That's what you wanted to be there for. You wanted to hang out with people who loved wrestling and who are back for it and were excited for it. Rampage did a monster number for a Friday night at 10 p.m. Hey, they're not going to be able to hold it up. Ah, that's not the point. The point is that CM Punk is a draw. He's bringing people back. I, th I think he is going to bring Laps fans back. I don't know if he's going to necessarily drain people from WWE. I think he's going to get people who fell out of love with wrestling. I think he might bring some people back. Because as it stands right now, I haven't seen, he is so, I don't think that, I'm trying to sit, trying to get the words here. AEW knew that they were signing someone big. Of course they did. But I don't think they realized how, just how big he was. I, I, frankly, I don't think anyone does. I, People are excited for him to be back. We saw it with Dynamite again last night and the rating that that created, despite the fact that, you know, the card in about itself being maybe a little on the soft side. People are excited for it. For him, specifically. We all saw the reports. The, the PWTs, you know, causing a nationwide shortage of ringer tees because they can't keep up with production. Oi, the... The, the 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 merch table, well, it's actually a merch kiosk at the United Center. It's in the middle of, a, of an atrium kind of thing, you know, and there's, there were two lines to the merch table that went all around the atrium, both of them, and met at the back. Two. And we had some chatting on the Discord when, that, when all that was happening, because, you know, they released the, the, the the exclusive punk t-shirt, you know, the I was there thing. I tell Kristen, I'm going to run to the merch table. I might go pick one up. 
go to the merch table. I'm like, man, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss all of Rampage if, if I stick around here. <laughs> it's fun to see people excited about wrestling. It's fun to see people just be like, this is something that this is something that 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 connects with us. That we're finally, it's finally giving us a passion back. It, he said, he said in his, in his, uh, in his promo, right? Something to the effect that he had fallen out of love with wrestling. He had lost his spark, you know, kind of thing. But, you know, you guys are giving it back to me, but he's giving back. CM Punk is, and I, I'm not coining this phrase, he, he, he was, he has always been the patron saint of WWE discontent, of discontent towards WWE. The fans that had turned on the company, who were lapsed by wrestling, who didn't like it anymore, who don't like the direction of the company right now. The same fans who fed Cody Rhodes, the Jacksons, Kenny Omega, and Tony Khan into creating another company. Those same fans. That was he he was the he was the, the patron saint of that crew. And he's coming back. He's returning to the fold. I don't want to make you know, I don't want to sit here and make religious comparisons, but I, I'm sure you're there's a couple that can pop into your mind. But that's essentially it. Arriving to a degree to 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 bring at the very least balance back to pro wrestling. How about that? Let's let let's let's bring out our chosen one Star Wars comparison instead. Those are those are better, right? Not quite as scandalous. <laughs> I think it's great. And I'm so glad the, that, that I was there. I have no idea how commentary reacted, but... And, and, and it was a perfect, perfect. No interviews. I was reading Tony Schiavone saying that the initial, initial plan was for Tony to interview him, but they all got around and they agreed that you know, maybe it's best that he goes out alone. He didn't need anyone. Didn't need. He just needed a mic. Phil came out, did his thing. It was amazing stuff. It, it really, really was. And and I I don't understand the bad takes because there's tons of them. But I don't understand them. Booker T. Talk, you know, he talked too much about WWE. He didn't. He talked about Reeves kindling his passion. He didn't even. The, utter the the three letters. We all know what he's talking about. Regardless, he talked about rekindling his passion. That it was stomped out on him. No, oh, he's so ungrateful. He's so ungrateful. I I I know CM Punk rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and I know he's got some beef. He's got some serious issues with. Other wrestlers, other people working in that very company as well. But this is not what we're going to be talking about today, by the way. And I do, I, I, I'm aware of all of that. But I, if, you, if you're if you of the of the thought that CM Punk, the only reason CM Punk left WWE is because, oh, he wouldn't give him the, he wouldn't, be, they wouldn't put him in the main event. They wouldn't give him title shots. Uh, you, there's, all you have to do is go into Google and click why did CM Punk leave WWE? And then you'll find out stuff about his about WWE uh, holding back royalty check money for him, uh, about Dr. Amon uh, misdiagnosing his staph infection, just calling it, oh, it's just a mass of, uh, of fat that's growing on your back, um, about his concussion misdiagnosis. Um, it goes a lot deeper than just your typical... A uh, wrestler throws a fit because he's not getting title shots type of situation. And I'm just saying, it's a, it, it's a perfect time for you to, to to go back and redo the research. Just read about it. This is all very well documented. But overall, my uh, the experience that I had, and I, when I say I, I mean we, Kristen and I, um, 
the um, the experience that we had at Rampage was was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we got we, despite the fact that there was like a very very short amount of wrestling on it, we did get uh, AEW uh, Dark tapings, which was uh, which was great. Great match between um, between Pac and Matt, Matt Seidel, which has already been aired. Uh, which they didn't advertise all that much, which was weird because I thought it was the strongest match uh, uh, on Dark. Um, and then we we got in the main event John Moxley defeating Daniel Garcia, which was short, but that's it. All the you know matches were short. We had uh, Jade Cargill defeating Kira uh, Kira Hogan in a squash. I'm gonna tell you, and I I, I don't want to hammer on this because I know I'm I'm not I'm not part of the Jade Cargill super fan club. I'm I'm. I want to. I'm getting there. I think she, you know, she has the presence. She has the look. She has the feel of a star. Jade Cargill is not being well used right now in WWE, uh, in AEW. Excuse me. Here I, I'm pulling a Jim Ross on you. Um, she, she's not. And be, when she came out, zero heat. She has nothing. It's dry. Nothing. So her squash match with Keir Hogan just like. Flew everyone over everyone's head, you know. It was, it was whatever, and we had the first um, AEW World Tag Team in the uh, Title Eliminator Tournament, where the Jurassic Express defeated Private Party, and they had a pretty good match. And it was a very ungrateful situation to be in because they were the match that followed the CM Punk thing. Um, but they did good. It was a fun. It was a fun little match. You've probably seen it. Seen it by now. It was. It was all right. Um, and then, let's talk about Dynamite from last night. Which, again, I was able to uh, to be a part of. Um, I'm going to pop up here um, the super chat that J.K. Schwal left us a little earlier in the evening. Thank you very much in regards to this. And this, in fact, actually sums up my, my thoughts about uh dynamite because when i got onto twitter after the match and started looking at after the card when we got home i saw that a lot of people didn't like it thought it was a bad show thought it was a weak show jk schwals here encapsulates my thoughts it says kind of rules that AEW had one of their weaker shows yet thought it was a blast to watch live interested to see the reactions friday to the rampage taping yeah because we got a rampage taping. hey okay First and foremost, that's my feeling. I I did not have a bad time at this show. Uh, I thought uh, I thought Dynamite was super fun. I thought that the segments connected live. Um, we can talk about the interest in certain matches for sure. But this was not a sit on your hands type of evening. I th- my biggest comparison. I think I've made this one. On the show or in the Discord, I don't quite remember. By the way, you should join the Mr. Warren Hayes Discord. Links in the description. Um, the AEW is a television show that puts on AEW puts on a live program for a live crowd that is also recorded for TV. Whereas WWE records a TV show in front of a live studio audience. I think that's that's the if you if you get that nuance, I that's how I feel about both shows, especially having been to both. I, I think the live experience for AEW is much more organic, much more fun, feels much more fluid, not as contrived. This is a lot of fun. Um, and and we bought tickets for Dynamite, right? Here's the thing: we get tickets for Dynamite, but we end up getting. Four hours of programming. We get a full hour of uh, dark uh, elevation tapings. We get the dynamite live show, and then on top of that, we got the 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 rampage taping. Oh my god, this is great! I'll tell you, not to be completely frank, the uh, the audience was a little gassed towards the end. We're a little, little out of breath when it came when, when, once we started getting into rampage territory. So it was a little more exhausting. It's a four-hour show, but it was a lot of fun. I, I had a great, great time. Uh, opened up with Orange Cassidy defeating 
Matt Hardy. This was, this is what I mean. This was a, sh this was a match that was made for the live crowd because everyone was into this. Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy's pops when he comes out, whether it be on the dark tapings, he gets a huge reaction. Like Matt Hardy playing a heel still gets these, whoa, Matt Hardy reactions. That's fantastic. And, but you really have to be there live to be like, oh, okay. Like big, big, big positive reactions for Hardy. That's fantastic. Defeated Orange Cassidy. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to, to play around with live. You know, when they were doing the delete and shin kicks at first, it was, you know, just silly stuff to get the audience into it. Um, <clears throat> thought the latter uh, part of the match was a little, seemed a little rough. It seemed a little rough, but I, it was fine. I, I I thought, and it was a good way to to kick off the show. Got the people excited about it. Orange Cassidy's over like crazy. Don't don't even worry about it. Uh, the Lucha Brothers uh, defeated the Varsity Blondes, uh, which is which is fine. Here's an interesting thought um, on the dark tapings. I don't know. Do you guys want me to give light spoilers for the dark tapings? Or let me know, because because there's certain things that I could point out. Um, one thing that I can point out, which is not a spoiler in and about itself, but Chad, do tell me if you if you want without giving results. I, I won't give results, you know, just match you know, match compositions and stuff like that. I'll tell you this: um, Thunder Rosa, you know, I mentioned it. You know, she got a huge reaction at. Uh, at the start of uh, at, at the Warrior Wrestling match, she worked both dark tapings that we saw, the Elevation ones and the dark one, and she was she gets a huge re like a huge reaction. She is over, 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 over. Maybe maybe not as big as Brit right now because Brit Brit is kind of spectacular, but oh. She is over. It's crazy. All right, I'll, so I'll skirt. I'll skirt away from from light spoilers. I won't spoil anything, but I will say this: Julia Hart, green as goose shit, still has a long way to go. A long way to go. But being in this act, you know, with the. With the Varsity Blondes is giving her TV time and whatnot, so she's getting exposure. If AEW, if AEW does right by her, give her proper training, let her grow into the business, I will tell you this: they have a huge natural baby face on their hands. People are excited to see this girl. She's terrible, but that's because she's inexperienced, not because she's bad. She'll get she. She has a long way to go. But, uh, you know, she ain't there yet. I can tell you that much. Uh, but the Lucha Brothers and the Varsity Blondes had a good little match. Nothing nothing wrong about it, but it wasn't something that was going to tear down the house either. It was fine. Jamie Hayter defeated Red Velvet uh, in her debut match. Um, I'm very, very high on Red Velvet. You guys know this. I think she's fantastic. Um... And as much as she was very uneven in this match, um, you know, her her topes are just they're crazy. Just, 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 fantastic dives, you know, absolute fantastic. And 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 I and I'll keep saying this. Red Velvet, she is she's well liked and she's trusted. She was the one they turned to when Brandy got pregnant and couldn't do the Shaq Jade Cargill match. They turned to her to get into that match so she could pull the weight. She turned to her. They turned to her when it was time for Jade to have her first singles match. They turned to her when it was time to wrestle Britt Baker in Pittsburgh. And they turned to her once again with Jamie Hader, Jamie Hader's first match. Like they and so 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 she's she's a great, typically solid worker. Had a very uneven match, but I'll tell you what happened here. Despite the fact that this match was uneven and she completely blew that moonsault, that uh, that springboard moonsault, like completely blew it. 
What this match did was demonstrate how fucking good Jamie Hayter is at keeping a match together because she worked through the fallacies and the roughness because there there were two there there really was two red velvets in this match tonight uh, last night and Hayter stardom strong a, a solid worker experienced talented this she was able to keep to keep this match from going off the rails and you saw it like you you saw Jamie's like okay I'm taking over here It's not a bad thing. And this, this is exactly the kind of talent that WWE, uh, there you go again, Jim Ross, exactly the type of talent that AEW needs for their women division. That's exactly what they need. Women like Jamie Hayter who will just, who can, who can guide a match. If Red Velvet had been having a match with, uh, God bless her, Anna Jay, and that kind of shit would have happened. Uh, it would have it would have turned into a clusterfuck. It just would not have worked. Jamie's too experienced, too solid to let something let faults like that slip through. They adapted. They worked through it. Probably could have been a better match, sure. But to me, just proves how good of a get Jamie Gator. Jamie Gator. My God, what's going on, Warren? Jamie Hayter is for the women's division. It was fantastic. Um, I think the match that sort of just like flatlined for everyone was the gun club versus the factory where everyone was like, I don't know. Like no one was really paying attention in my section. Everyone was on their phones. And why would you really? There's no reason to really get excited about this, right? Main event of Malachi Black just destroying Brock Anderson was a joy. <laughs> it was so good. Rest in peace, the Anderson bloodline. Look, it's consistently good booking for Aleister Black. No you know, teleportation, no, you know, summoning blood to rise from beneath the ring. No, sh you know, just, he's got a, uh, an intimidating entrance. He comes in with the mask. He does his thing and he kicks ass. And I loved how they built this match th with the little vignettes where they had Arn, where they had Malachi, Tommy in saying, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, um, I'm gonna kill you, Brock. I understand you're you're gonna die tonight. Yeah, you're my sacrifice, and uh, and that's just what's gonna happen. You know, you're coming in to save your dad's honor, but it's, you know, sins of the father, whatever. And then, then you get Brock, uh, Arn Anderson, who's standing next to his boy, and he's like, well, you know what, <laughs> he's you're. you're He's probably going to lose, <laughs> but at least he's doing the right thing. And I'm like, this is fantastic. And what happens? Well, Brock gets an early hope spot, right? But Black just destroys him. And then Arn comes in. Black destroys him again. Perfect booking. You don't have to overthink things too much. And, and we don't need a long series between Malachi Black and Brock Anderson at this point. You know, it doesn't have to devolve into Seth Rollins versus... Dominic Mysterio. The point was made here. Now, I can understand that, you know, people, uh, that people are like, this is the main event. This is how we're ending the show. This is kind of weird. And granted, it, it kind of was because the, then Big Shoddy ran out. I think people were sort of expecting a big angle. They were sort of expecting maybe Cody to show up or something, but I was expecting a big angle. This, not so much. So, I mean, if Alistair starts running through uh, the Nightmare family, I'm okay with that. Just continue destroying people and they're going to make a star out of them. They're going to make 
a star. They're going to use him as the star that he is. At WWE couldn't find a way to do it because they like to overthink shit instead of just having the guy get in the ring, look intimidating, and kick dudes in the face. That's that's what he has to do, and that's what he's doing. Some fun matches. Of course, we're we have to talk about the MJF, Chris Jericho stuff. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm shocked they're running this again. And I'm spent on it. I'm, I'm not excited about it. It's not something where I'm like, yeah, William Davis, by the way, good to see you. Welcome to the chat. And it's not, it's not something where I'm like, "Mm, this was such a good idea to run this again. I'm like, nah, son, no, we're good. We're good. And the fact that MJF comes out with his t-shirt saying, you know, MJF three, Jared Blow zero. It's like, there you, that's all you need. That I we, we that's all it should be. I can understand the story where Jericho is like, I have to prove this to myself. I have to do this. Maybe I don't belong in a ring anymore. You lost three times to the guy, Chris. Come on now. Oh, yes, in different circumstances. Yes, there was the, you know, the cage match. And then MJF won after five week, four previous weeks of Jericho getting brutalized. So he oh, wasn't 100%. Yeah. Yes, I, I understand it all. But, I mean, you know, another company does this kind of stuff and I get really annoyed at it. And I'm really annoyed at this. I enjoy... here's, But here's the twist. Here's the thing. By putting Jericho's career on the line at All Out, it creates discussion. And it creates anticipation for a match that ultimately, legitimately, could go either way. At this very point in time, on August 26th, This is a match that I feel could go either way. If I'm booking this, I give MJF the win. MJF will have a, will always have as a notch on his belt. He'll always be the guy who not only retired Chris Jericho, but who Jericho could not beat. And that for a heel like MJF, that's gold. That's, he can ride that for years. He, we can forget about it and then he'll bring it up at some point. Like it's it's brilliant. That's what I do. Clean sweep by MJF. Will they do it at, at All Out? I, I, I think it can go either way at this point. At this point, I think it's it, it's an interesting 50-50 situation. And I like that. I, I, I like... Because unlike the... AW world title situation where I don't think I, I think the right I think we're all in agreement that the the, the outcome is clear I, I don't think Omega is losing another title to Christian Cage right I think we still have the hangman page match to happen um you know this that's an outcome we can see coming this one here not so much because I think there's a case to be made on both sides, but we still got a couple of, well, no, we only have like one more week, right? Uh, All Out is like uh, not this weekend, the weekend, uh, next weekend. So, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. MJF, I, like, I think he should retire Jericho. I think it'd be great. That's, we're talking about building stars. We're talking about how, you know, Conversations about Daniel Garcia coming in and feuding with top guys and not like, not being in top guy programs. Darby, Mox, losing efforts, but he's up there. Dante Martin, you know, we're talking about making these stars. MJF, man. And he's a, he's a, he's going to be a pillar of this company moving forward. Why not give him like that ultimate thing? I won't give out any rampage spoilers. 
Um, you already know the matches. But I will say this. Lucha Bros versus Jurassic Express is a must-see. Fantastic match. Had me out of my seat. Tay Conchi versus The Bunny is a match that happened. And uh, <laughs> Omega and uh, Brandon Cutler versus Christian Cage and Frankie Kazarian was a blast, but lots of comedy in it. It was a goofy. Sh- it was it was a it was a bit of a goofy main event. It was fine. Um, it's not a work rate match for sure. Good stuff though. DGMC left us a super chat. Thank you very much. He says, "Will Malachi Blackfoot murder Pharaoh?" <laughs> Taking bets. Oh my god. No, they they don't want to bring. They brought Pharaoh out that once when the pyro started going on and people shat on. Cody and Brandy for doing it. Yeah, they they ain't putting Pharaoh in any storylines moving forward. I don't think. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Uh, <clears throat> interesting to note that when when the Rampage and uh, yeah, again, not given any results. Rampage ends. The main event angle wraps up. They call back out CM Punk uh, to uh, to send the crowd home happy, kind of thing. So. Not being taped. He, he starts talking. And, and we also have Frankie Kazarian, Christian Cage, who come out as well. Uh, the baby faces of the main event. So everyone's in the ring in there. Everyone's loose. Everyone's having a good time. Christian Cage and CM Punk trading some jabs and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, Cage says... Um, there, there's a couple of quotes of, of, of note here. It was, a, it was, a, it really was a fun way to send everyone off. Um, Christian Cage said that it's a big fucking deal that you're here, Phil, CM Punk. So that was, a, uh, of course, got a huge reaction. But to me, the more telling quote was from Frankie Kazarian, who said, like, who said, as a guy who's been AEW from day one, I... I'd say that it. Uh, he says that I, it's great that uh, that you guys are here and you are both welcome additions to this company. That was that was amazing. He said it on behalf of everyone in the back. So that was really cool. Uh, for those of you who are going to the Now Center, formerly the Sears Center, uh, CM Punk has confirmed that he will have the ice cream bars there. He said that at the uh, at the end of the. Uh, as he was sending everyone home um, because there was a whole thing about where my ice cream like, Christian Cage says where's my ice cream bar <laughs> and he said CM Punk said something to the effect like oh well I would have brought some here tonight but I but uh, you know I would have had to have people pay for them he says you know I show up on you know Rampage people pay for their uh, he says Dynamite people pay for for the uh, for the sh- for for the ice cream and on Friday nights it's free. Uh, by the a very tasty ice cream bar. It was a it was a very very tasty ice cream bar. I enjoyed it. premium quality. It's it wasn't like the chocolate was nice. You know, it wasn't one of the super flimsy things that you know you bite into it and it slices slices the roof of your mouth. You know, no, it was very very good, very nice and. Very refreshing, leaving the arena and going out into the Chicago heat. That was it was a nice touch. And yes, I saved the wrapper and the stick. <laughs> it's got it's gonna go on a frame. Uh, but I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I had I had a really I'm not a fan of Klondike bars to begin with. So yes, I'm I'm on record. So we're asking me this in the chat. Is it better than a than a Klondike bar? Yes. Is it better than a Yukon bar? And my Canadians out there will know what I'm talking about. Is it better than a Yukon bar? No. It's not better than a Yukon bar, though. It was amazing stuff. It was so good. It was a fan. It, my my AEW live experience was very rewarding. And that and it feels good. You 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 go, I got my fill of wrestling, saw a whole bunch of people that I really like to watch wrestle. It was a fantastic time. 
would do again. Highly recommend. If you have a chance to go see a, an AEW show, please do. It's it, it, it's really it, it's really good. Go for the go for the the dark tapings. It's fantastic stuff. You know what else is fantastic stuff? The fact that I was back tonight doing a podcast. That was fantastic. And it's even more fantastic that you all joined me here live this evening or that you're watching me on demand as well. I want to thank you. Thank you all so very, very much. You know, um, it's, I don't say it enough, but I'm going to say it here. I am so incredibly grateful for everyone who watches, everyone who listens, everyone who interacts, who pops in the Discord, who drops a comment, who leaves a like, who joins us live in the chat. I am uh, extremely grateful for uh, for it all. And I hope I can continue to earn and maintain your, uh, your loyalty, uh, whatever you want to call it, your faith, uh, your enjoyment of coming to watch the Mr. Warren Hayes show because I, I'm, I'm extremely, extremely touched every time I do this. See so many people pop up. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I really do. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining me again tonight. Remember, head on over to belltobells.com and youtube.com slash belltobells all this weekend. At, uh, we're going to be at uh, the NWA weekend in St. Louis, so there's going to be some great content happening over there. We're going to get interviews with the ladies, and we're going to be uh, covering the entire show. It'll be a good time, so be sure to hang out for that. Otherwise, I want to thank everyone for uh, for joining me again this evening. Thank you all. I hope you have a great rest of your night. I'm going to go fire up a, a post-show. Right, that's not the right one. <laughs> this is the right one. <laughs> Thank you all, everyone. We'll see you next time.